All right, guys, I'm going to share a story, and I believe this may actually be the reason why I'm gang stalked, or at least this could be one of the very best reasons why I am gang stalked. Kind of a personal story. Um, it's kind of why I refrain from showing my face. Um, cause I'm going to share another story later on and it has to do with my employment. But this story in particular has to do with, uh, a cop and it's a little bit more detailed than just a story about a cop so let me get to it <sighs> now I will premise by the story by saying that I do come from a family that's as I've come to learn now as a you know as an adult later on in life that my family is very narcissistic they're like a cult. And I am indeed the black sheep and I don't fit in because I didn't conform to the way that they wanted me to be, which was to be like a cowboy, you know. Um, and it just is what it is, you know. I just was going to be who I am and be my person, be my true being. I wasn't going to be a puppet. And that's what my dad wanted, a puppet. Anyways, let me get to the story. This occurred back in 2010. And the family is going to go camping for Memorial Weekend. Now, Memorial Weekend's coming up, and that's why I got reminded of this story or this, this experience because I've been, you know, putting it to the back of my memory banks. But I thought now was the appropriate time to share it. So we're going to go camping for M Memorial Weekend, right? And it's my father, my stepmother, myself, my half-brother, his girlfriend, my uncle, his wife, and their two kids. Now, I was under the impression this is just a good old you know, fun family camping trip for the Memorial Weekend. And this is going to be great. Because I love camping. Boy, was I wrong. Friday night. Well, you know, Friday we get there. Everything's good. Everything's cool. You know, we, we're in the camping trailers. So everything's, you know, quick and easy set up and get a campfire going and everything's, you know, already perfect. Just perfect afternoon. But then I notice a couple cars show up and I happen to know one of these people. One of them's a, a state police officer at the time. He's not a state police officer now. I believe he's a, a sheriff. But anyways... Um, so he's there, his wife is there, I kind of forgot who was in the second car, but as the afternoon got going and the sun started setting, more cars showed up and more cars showed up, and before you knew it. It wasn't just a little campfire. No, it was kind of like a little, uh, a small bonfire. And there's a, quite, quite a few people that I don't even know. <laughs> but apparently my father and my stepmother know them. And it looks like my uncle knows some of the people. They're all socializing and mingling or and whatever, yada, yada, this and that. Um, so let me just get to the meat and potatoes of the story. As the evening goes on and whatnot, here's what happens. So my stepmother 
comes out of like nowhere being drugged by two women and she's mumbling her words and she can barely uh walk that's why you know they're they're carrying her shoulder and shoulder to the camping trailer she's hammered my stepmother's hammered she shouldn't even be drinking to begin with you know she can't handle her liquor worth a damn but anyways a little drama ensues between my half brother and the girls that drug his mom or yeah that drug his mom over there to the camping trailer well whatever they argue blah 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 i stay out of it well it turns out that my stepmom ends up throwing up in the camping trailer up there on the uh, mattress where the, where her and my dad would sleep now that's pretty nasty right and the only reason i know that is because I heard some commotion in the camping trailer and I went in there to go check out what was going on and I could smell the barf and, and my stepmom was telling me, oh my gosh, come and help me clean it. Yeah, come and help me clean it. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I'm not going to help you clean it, right? <laughs> so I, I, you know, I tell my brother to uh, go ahead and help, you know, help help your mom clean that mess that she, that she made up there. So he does, he goes in there. And while he's doing all that, now I see my dad being being brought over in the same fashion. This is sick, guys. I'm, it makes me, it, it, oh man, this sickens my stomach to even try to be uh, sharing this story again. Now you know why it's been in my memory banks for, or in the back of my memory banks for so long. But I see my dad approaching with two guys now. And he's, you know, pretty hammered who knows on what mainly alcohol um i actually stand in the way because i already know my father when he's in that state i heard and with what and with what just occurred with my stepmom you know throwing up up in the camping trailer oh man i know my dad would have Ooh, who knows what he would have done to her but i know he would have done something to her and then there would have been a major drama that night major well, there still was, because check us out. I stand in the way of the, you know, of those guys and, and, and putting my dad into the camping trailer. And one of the guys says, hey, watch, hold, hold him, hold him. And the guy approaches me and he's like, hey, bro, this is not your trailer. This is your dad's trailer. Move out of the way. And I said, look, I know what's best for the family right now. And I said, he does not belong inside the trailer with my stepmom. And I can't believe I stood up for her, considering all the things that she's done now. And I'm being gang stalked. And I know she's a part of the program. She's done some pretty nasty things, guys. But anyways, fast forward. Um... As I'm standing there and I'm and I'm explaining things to this guy, he cheap shots me. Um to be honest with you guys, I don't even remember what happened. So I'm gonna tell you from according to my brother's girlfriend, because she saw everything. This was her account afterwards. She said after the guy punched me, I was dazed. Like, I stood back and I was dazed for a second or two. And then she said, I, once I came to, you know, came into my, my being again, I punched him. He dropped to the ground and I got on top of him. And she said, I just started railing on him. I don't even remember doing any of that stuff, guys. Like, I really don't. I, I, I have no recollection of doing any of this. All I remember is me being drug away by my arms by two guys they're dragging me away from that guy right so oh and one thing to mention um and it it is what it is okay it's just it is what it is i was younger and pro probably uh not thinking as as uh wise as i should have at that time 
but uh, I did have my pistol on me. Um, well, anytime I go to the outdoors, I always have my pistol on me. Because if I want to go out hiking, I always have it. Well, I just happened to have it on me, you know. It was in my waistband. Um, check this out. So when, the, when that guy punched me and I fell down, well, I guess the gun fell out of my waistband and onto the ground. Um, because that's what I went reaching for on my waistband, right? was my gun after those two guys had drugged me away. And then I, you know, uh, stepped back into my being and I, you know, knew what was going on. I tried reaching for my gun and I couldn't find it. It just wasn't around. So I went back to the place because, I mean, at this point, drama was just broke out, you know. Everyone's running around and... It was just people are yelling, and it was just crazy. It got crazy there for a minute or two. Well, I ran out of the perimeter of the camp, right? And I I did like a half circle back to the original spot of where I was at before I got, you know, uh, dropped. Or not dropped, but, you know, punched. And then I got on top of that guy. Um, I went back to that area, and luckily I found my pistol on the ground. So I picked it up, I cocked it, and I just had it. I had it there ready for anybody that was going to come at me because it was just me, basically me against everyone at this point. And now some people see that I have a gun, and those people actually, some of them take off running to their vehicles. Some are still just all standing around watching, you know, looking and one of the people that's right next to me happens to be that, you know, very first car that drove up, which was the state police. Off duty, partying, drinking, and who knows what else. Um, so he's over here and he approaches me and he's like, you know, hey, man, this is not the right way to, you know, do things. Come on, hand it over, hand it over. Give me the gun, hand it over, man. And at this point, you know, the gun, I actually did point it at him. I had it pointed at him. And then I, when I, you know, after the adrenaline was starting to settle down, I pointed the gun down at the ground, but, you know, in his direction, but I had it pointed down. And I remember just saying his name and I said, leave. You guys need to just all leave. Look what you guys brought. Just leave. And I remember him giving me a really messed up look. That's all I can remember clearly. He might have said something, but I don't remember the words. And I don't want to put words in his mouth, but... Um, I just know he was very disappointed. He had a very disgusted look on his face. And, um, yeah, that's basically the story. And that's the reason why, or one of the main, main reasons why I believe I'm, you know, probably targeted or um, in this program. I can't say for sure. This is just a speculation, but this is like one of the best guesses I got. Well, I'm about to head out now to go do some laundry. Y'all have a good afternoon and take care.